Part 2. Azure Moon. Verdant Rain Moon. Our Chosen Paths. The Kingdom Army has captured Fort Mercius. Managing troops from the now stable Western Kingdom and former Alliance territory, the Kingdom Army returns to Garigmok to regroup and reorganize its forces. With sufficient might to challenge the Empire, the Kingdom Army finalizes their plans to march on Enbar, the Imperial capital. Ah, there you are. His Highness was looking for you. He's gone ahead and started interrogating the prisoner, Viscount Kleiman's man. He said he'd like for you and I to be present as well. Will you come with me? I cannot overlook your reckless remarks. Are you really so keen to lose your head? I only did what I believed was right. I swear to the goddess that I'm not lying. Amidst the turmoil of the tragedy, Lady Patricia was supposed to be the only one who was unharmed. We had been given orders ahead of time to not approach her carriage. Of course not. What would my stepmother have had to gain from such a... Perhaps Lady Patricia would have done anything to return to the Empire, to her husband and daughter. What exactly are you implying? For the past few months, I've been spying on lords who defected to the Empire in order to investigate rumors about Lady Patricia. Cornelia's words were true. The two of them, I am afraid they conspired together after all. Enough of this nonsense. You say she wished to return home? That isn't nearly enough reason to cause such a tragedy. I do not intend to imply that the two of them were solely responsible for the whole affair. There were likely nobles who opposed the king, or potentially someone who wanted to throw the kingdom into chaos. The Empire and people like Solon and Kranya had their motives too. So my stepmother joined with them to cause the tragedy. Is that what you believe? Ultimately, this is just conjecture based on the evidence at hand. I have no idea what their true intentions were. I see. We will hear what this man has to say, for now. My lord had long felt that King Lambert's radical ways were dangerous. At the time, he was approached with an offer to take part in the incident at Dusker. My lord loves his homeland. To me, he embodied justice. We were only doing what we thought was right. And so, in the name of justice, he caused massacre upon massacre out of love for his homeland. You murdered your own king, killed our soldiers, and involved innocent citizens. And yet you have the gall to speak of justice! I am only standing before you now, because I could no longer bear the weight of my sins. No. I accept your hatred, and even the punishment of death. But I still believe it was a massacre in the name of justice. Gilbert. Lock this man in his cell. Are you not going to kill him? I will make that decision once I have had time to consider this man's definition of justice. Yes, your highness. No, I cannot say that I am. Tell me, professor. How well do you remember your father, Gerald? Soon enough, you will come to understand how painful it is to forget the faces of those who have passed on. To be honest, I cannot really remember my stepmother's... <sighs> that woman's smile, nor the sound of her voice. I always told myself that I would not allow my mind to forget, and yet... All I can recall with clarity is her gazing away, so forlorn. 
Did my stepmother wish to go home so badly that she would kill father and me? Kill her false family? Home to her own blood. Her true family. I suppose it doesn't make any difference now. I am asking you questions you could not possibly know the answer to. I am finished with thoughts like that. I am finally able to go on living without clinging to hate. If I truly treasure those who have died, then I must earnestly atone for my sins. Father, Glenn, all of the soldiers who have fallen, the people of Dusker who still suffer persecution. The only atonement I can offer them now is to take responsibility for this broken kingdom that has been entrusted to me. That is why I feel that I must meet with Edelgard and try to talk to her. Do you think it is a fool's errand? Honestly, I think so too. But I must swallow my feelings and grudges, our whole history really, and ask her about this future that she sees. What she aims for once her domination is complete. What kind of justice she clings to as she fights. And why she felt it necessary to start this war. I believe that asking her these things is the true responsibility I have been tasked with as king. We will march our troops to the Imperial capital. But before any battle begins, we will set up camp nearby and send a messenger. I will tell her that I need to speak with her in a safe place without any weapons or troops. As to whether or not she will agree to my request, well, that rests solely on Edelgard. I would like to believe that as well. You know, Professor, when we fought in Ferdiad, Cornelia mocked me and called me pitiful. But even if it is true that my stepmother never loved me, I am not to be pitied. After all, I have allies and dear friends who care for me. And now, I also have you by my side. Goddess, I ask for guidance. Professor, you're always watching over me, aren't you? I've spent my life avoiding people, so I wouldn't have to expose them to this horrible burden of a crest. My father was born with it as well. He's the one who told me to avoid others as much as possible. He said it would be the cause of great unhappiness to both myself and everyone around me. After some time, I was only truly comfortable opening up to animals and the goddess. Do you remember the time you asked what it was I prayed for? Yes, but that wasn't the case. Back then, I felt that my life served no purpose, and that I was nothing more than a burden. In truth, I was begging the goddess to take me to her. That was my daily prayer. But now I fear the idea of dying and being left alone. I have friends who accept me for who I am now, in spite of my crest. And I have you watching over me. I finally learned to accept the kindness and warmth of others. It's because of you, Professor. Because of you, I've decided to live. I'm sorry to have worried you, but I'm all right now. I'm still not ready to tell everyone about my crest, but I feel that the burden of my curse has been lifted. Even if I'm separated from you or any of my friends, the memories I've made here will give me the strength to continue on. Oh, I'm 
I'm sure I'll have the strength to move forward if we're together. Mercedes, you're looking divine as always. Good evening, Sylvain. Thank you for coming out to see me. Just the two of us meeting at this time of night? You move quicker than I thought. Hmm? I don't know what speed has to do with it, but there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Ah, okay. I probably should have figured that out. I can be so forgetful at times. I neglected to mention this the other day. I meant to say that I know you've been through a lot in this life. Huh? Me? Your parents have placed a great deal of pressure on you as their heir. And it's all because you were born with a crest. You've had to put up with such lofty expectations. All of the kingdom's noble houses expect a lot from their heirs. I'm no different from any other noble guy or gal. We've all got responsibilities. But didn't you mention that your brother envied you enough to wish you dead? I'm sure that wasn't easy. Thinking about it, life was probably a lot harder for my brother than it ever has been for me. Didn't you also mention that women were only interested in having your, as you say, crest baby? I'm not very interested in the particulars, but I get the feeling that you don't care very much for these women who throw themselves at you. Um. I'd appreciate it if maybe you kept that observation between the two of us. Your secret's safe with me. I understand the pain you've had to carry. I know you've got your share of bad memories too, but... That's why you feel comfortable letting your guard down around me. Come now. That's enough with the sad smile. Mercedes. Was my sad smile really that bad? Did it ruin my dashing good looks? Not at all. You actually look more handsome to me with honesty on your face. <laughs> Aw, here come the waterworks. Don't be ashamed of crying. I'm here to protect you. Will you protect me in return? I will, I promise. You know, Mercedes, you really are a special lady. Why, hello there. If it is your wish. <sighs> I've nothing left to give today, dear. If it is your wish. within your grasp. is your wish. <sighs> I've nothing left to give today, dear. If it is 
is your wish. <sighs> Everything is within your grasp. Come back soon now. I've got a question. <laughs> Wish us luck. Pretty good job. There must be more. I have much expertise. Thanks. Professor. 